Hello and welcome on 360 Sport on Trough CV. Um, Adeni Aji Shafe. Well, it's time to take you around the world of sports as we give you updates concerning what's happening around the sports and activities across the globe. Well, starting with the first story, looking at the performance of Nigerian teams, national team when it comes to football, really it has not been too rosy. We look at recently the under 23 uh, team were actually ousted by Guinea over there in Casablanca, Morocco. We saw what happened to uh, Super Eagles, they managed to defeat Guinea. Bissau at home by a long goal score by uh, on uh, penalty uh, through Moses Simon. The first leg we lost against them in Abuja. And we look at how our teams have been struggling. Even the under 20 at AFCON, they struggled. We saw what they did before they could get that particular bronze. And we still look at uh, the entire squad of uh, the male team, the male national team, especially. The women are trying their best. But really, something is up here. We'll be focusing on that particular topic. Nigerian national teams, uh, Nigerian national football teams' performance at qualifier. That's the topic we're looking at right now alongside Emmanuel Fashimi. Good to have Emmanuel. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, sincerely speaking, um, what is the roadmap for our, our football? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, before I, I, I really talk about this, let's look at Morocco. Let's look at Morocco side by side. What did Morocco do? They had what we call 10-year foot, uh, football development plan. They went to Spain. They went to France, they went to some of these top European uh, footballing uh, nations, got the idea, brought it back. Ten years after that roadmap, what did we see? Morocco ended up playing the third place match in the FIFA World Cup, an achievement that an African nation has never achieved. Mm -hmm. Not just that, in space of four months, they defeated some of the top footballing nations in the world right there in Qatar and even the last friendly they played against yes, Brazil. Brazil. Look at the dividend. The transformation of that also went across all the levels of their football uh, national team. Same thing with Senegal. Senegal also uh, followed that, uh, uh, that route. same route. Now, Look at the dividend. Look at what they are achieving. Look at what they are achieving in football. Mm. Where are we? In time past, we can say, okay, we were the giants of Africa when it comes to sports and when it comes to football. Because why? We had the raw talent. Every, every family you go to in Nigeria, you are sure to get a sport person, either a footballer, an athlete, or one way or the other. We have the talent everywhere. After Brazil in the whole world, where do you look to again? It's Nigeria. That you can see raw football as in talent when it comes to football. On the streets, you see everybody playing football. Weekends, go out. Just take your time to go out. Go to the streets. I remember back then in Lagos, sometimes we used to put barricades. On the main road, the road that is tired, we start playing what football on Saturday morning. No vehicle passes, no motorcycle, no tricycle is passing. Because why? Because of football. And you see people gather. We had this. What were we supposed to do? We we're supposed to develop on this. But we failed. We failed to look in war. We failed to develop. Okay, of, uh, I think that was last year. When I have, we signed an MOU with Morocco. We want to emulate what they actually, uh, what they did with their football, with their sport. Have we started that? Have we even, where is the roadmap? Are we there yet? No. The only, if, and it boils down to the policies, government policies, and then our administrators. What do they want to do with our football? Well, you don't just say you want to be a football administrator when you don't even know what football is all about. When you don't even have idea. It, it's not, you mustn't go to the field and kick, and kick the ball before you can become an administrator. You have these ideas. You have your eyes to see. You can think. You can reason. So if put, putting all this together, our administrators need to wake up. Who are those at the helm of affairs? What do they know about sports? What do they know about football? Do they have that idea? Can they stand their ground and say, no, this, this must work. This must be the yardstick. This must be the criteria before we appoint you as this or as that. 
what are your levels what are your past experiences what have you done what is your achievement show it to us let's know what is speaking for you not because this person is my brother not because of the federal character uh, quota system and you are because the, this person is from the west and you must have a westerner sometimes they go if like okay let's look at usa 94 squad and even before then we used to have quality we have bulk of the southeast and the southwest players in the super egos because why qualities they were they were the best that we can have then they were the best of the best we have and nobody they, they were playing for nigeria not playing for southwest or playing for southeast so we should we should we should look inward if we, if we look at if we if we go say okay we are, we have an mou with morocco now have we started following the plan mm -hmm. what is our developmental skill okay now i will mention i will take a scenario 2000 and i think that was coach yemi teller boys i think that was 2007 uh, fifa under 17 world cup mm. we have players who did very well where are the players mm. where is the likes of uh, kabiru where is the like of uh, likes of uh, christianus macaulay where is this where is alpha Rabi, where, Rabi, where is uh, Rabi. Rabi, where is ajiboe where are they? Now, look at the squad. We still have uh, Nacho is playing for Real Madrid. Camacho is still playing top football in, in, in Spain. De Gea is number one. From 2018 till now, De Gea has been number one in Manchester United. Mm. Look at others. So, look at Pedro. Pedro is... So, where are our own players then? We we'll just take players straight to under 17, and after then, they go into extinction. Ronaldinho came here, yeah, that was in 2003, to play in Abuja here. Ronaldinho span winning World Footballer of the Year. Now, let's look at Mikel Obi's score, 2005, in Holland. Where is Tari Taiwo? Look at Messi. Messi is still playing. Has won how many World Footballer of the Year? De Maria Angel. The only person we can say, okay, out of that squad now, has something to show is Mikel Obi. But where is the Mikel Obi today? He has retired, but Messi is still, is still playing. So what are we saying? Mm. Our administrators need to wake up. You don't, see, like I said earlier, on, if they give you an appointment and know you and you know you are not capable, you should say no. There are some things you say no to. Mm. Our administrators don't even know what football is all about. They don't know football science. They don't know sports science. What are we saying? You just bring a man who has, who has no business because of compensation. They compensate you and say, okay, take this position. Because why? He was there uh, when, you were, when you were nursing your political ambition and when you were running for the political ambition. Politics and sport cannot work. We should wake up from our slumber. If we continue like this, I tell you, in the next five years, Nigeria will be like Eritrea. Because Eritrea is not even heard when it comes to world football. And that is where we'll find ourselves. Just so that it won't happen, we are looking at the focus on Nigerian national football team's performance at qualifiers and also tournaments. We've been to tournaments, we've been at qualifiers, and it's not really going well. We, we saw what we did at AFCON. We managed to get well there. We saw what our ladies also did at AFCON. They managed to also uh, get uh, uh, to qualify for the World Cup where the likes of South Africa, Morocco, Zambia, they were easy. Uh, they actually got it easy on the platter of uh, performance. But right now, looking at under 17, under 20, you might, you might want to say, okay, well, they are trying, they are doing well. But we look at the Afghan under 20. The guys also, they struggled. It was obvious that they struggled to get it all place, the bronze medal. It wasn't an outright win for them. And uh, it took time before they pick up. Now look at the under 23, ousted from the uh, Olympic Games. Castle of Guinea. Look at Chan, our own base Eagles. We are ousted by Ghana. World Cup, ousted by Ghana. Guinea Bissau is almost, uh, <laughs> they, they won one, we won one. And now, although we are back to the top of our group, and uh, you look at the women, they are going to the World Cup now. I'm trying to look at the national football teams now. You look at the women, the dominance that we had over Africa is waning off. It has way off. With the way we used to score nine goals, 10, 7, 6, the teams are, in fact, immediately they place you against Nigeria, you are afraid. It's no longer working. Our ladies are now struggling. The likes of Zambia, Morocco, South Africa, they've taken over from us. 
Ghana, they are coming. Cameroon, Cote d'Ivoire. Now, you look at the Flamingos, the uh, Far Comets. They are still there, but the grip is also being shaken up by other countries. What is wrong? What, what do you think we can do now that our national football teams, Flamingos, Far Comets, Super Falcon, Golden Eaglets, Flying <laughs> Eagles, and Super Eagles. Now we just saw the under 23 out. What can we do to just get to, to be on the right path where our football can at least get back to those 1994 that you mentioned, 1996? You understand? I, I, everything started crumbling from 1998. We didn't know. We were still thinking we had it. From 1998 World Cup, I still remember that France 98, everything started dwindling. The last time where, uh, the fact that we won the Nations Cup in 2013 doesn't mean, oh, we are, we are still there. No. What, that one came, what, it, was, what, it was like a flash in the pan. Yes. You understand? So, we need to tell ourselves it's true that football really started dwindling after the Olympics, 1996 Atlanta Olympics. You understand? From then, it started dropping, and we, all the other ones we've won, we managed to win one way or the other. What can we do? Now, uh, uh, like you mentioned, this for the Falcons, for the Falcons, we shouldn't be doing uh, experimenting. We want to experiment this. We have indigenous coaches who have taken their time to develop themselves in women's football. Regara, Regaragui of Morocco. Egrake. Egrake, is, that's the Moroccan the, coach. Moroccan coach. He's not an outsider. It's from He's from Morocco. Morocco. Yeah. They sent him out to go and learn, and he came back. In space of 12 months, look at the result he produced for, for the nation. Now, our Falcons... Who has been let me, uh, the, 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 the landladies mm. of African football? Look at our dismal performance at the last uh, outcome. Mm. Even the bronze medal, we could not win it. We, are, we came forth. Coming forth, that is the worst result. And it was the like, worst okay, we, we just have to crawl to the World Cup. At least the last form will make it to the World Cup. So we have to crawl. We crawl to the World Cup. Without not, it was really not even a convincing one. Mm. If the, if would have, if not because of um, though we were the one that gave Africa, making us to have uh, about I think four representatives or five representatives in the World Cup, due to our exploit because we have never missed any, any, World, any Cup. World Cup. That was why they gave us that slot. extra um, slot. And if had it been we we, we did not perform in time past, mm. that means Nigeria will not be. As the Super Falcons will not be in the World Cup. Now, like the question you asked, what can we really do? We say we should go back to the drawing board. Where is the drawing the board? Drawing board I asked is someone food. that question. Where is the drawing board? The drawing is board place? is full. All we need to do is to sit down and tell ourselves the truth. They say the truth is bitter. But at some point, you need to ask yourself questions. We need to ask ourselves. All these stakeholders should come together. What can we really do to go out of this mess? Because it's a mess right now. Anybody that is playing Nigeria right now, they will put hand on their chest and tell you it's just a mere thing. We'll beat them. Mm. And that is what we are seeing. So we should not, we should not be gambling with ourselves. We should not play politics with it. We, there should not be tribalism, nepotism. Bringing all this into our football should stop. If you are not ready to work, if you don't, like I, I said from the onset, what is your achievement? What is your pedigree? What are your stats? What have you done? Well, if they, if, like, if they call Adeniyi right now, you among, let's say, okay, among the presenters of sports in Abuja, mm. you stand out. Mm. So if, what, what have, if, 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 if we want to place it side by side, let's call these same persons. What have they done in football? What, what, what is their achievement? What is their past record? What is their track record? You must have a track record. And that track record should be what should be speaking for you to place your head. We shouldn't say because uh, the highest bidder wins, wins, wins the race or wins whatever. So it shouldn't be highest bidder. The, the highest bidder now should be what have you done? Mm. Show us your result. Results should be speaking. Not where my pocket should be speaking. Results should speak. 
That is what we should. Our administrators should wake up. They should go out and learn. And if you don't want to go out and learn, then leave the space, leave the scene. Let those who knows it, mm. let them come in and, and do the job. Look mm. at what Morocco have gone far. South Africa, sincerely speaking, do you know why South Africa is not, even, not developing their national team in a way? But look at their league. Look at the look at the packaging. Look at the way they package their league and ties into the world. If you if you are listing leagues in in the world now, you must call South African. South Africa, uh, South Africa very league. very fr uh, television friendly. Uh, when very you, when well. So look at what what did they do? Go there. What did these people do to get it right? That is what you should be coming back home to tell us. This is what they did. Morocco had a ten-year football plan, and now look at the dividend. They didn't just say, okay, only the national, the senior national team. No, it costs uh, costs across look all. Look at their the, women. Look at their women. Look at what they did. In, in, they hosted and look at where they are now. They want to be hosting FIFA tournament if I year in year out. Because why? They have the facilities, they have the structure, they have everything working they for them. For they are bidding for World Cup. So if they host the World Cup, who said Morocco can, if they can get to uh, third place in the World Cup, to play third place, who said they cannot get to the final and win it? We've been talking concerning Nigerian national football teams. It's really very disheartening for the fact that things are not really going where the way we plan it. We need to get it right. Just like Iman and Fashemi mentioned, we need to go back and see how we can put the right people there, round peg in the round hole, and also go back to the grassroots and look inward. Well, talk, uh, talking about Nigerian football, focusing on Nigerian national football teams, performance at the qualifier, and also tournaments, which has not been going well at all. Quickly, we run through some matches going on right now across Nigeria in the MPFL and also NWFL. Let's look at the MPFL matches quickly. We have Bende Insurance against Aqua United, El Kanemi against Remo, Nasarawa away to Eimba, Gombe United versus Kwara uh, United. You have Shooting Stars, Plateau United, that's in Group A. We have Group B, matches are also ongoing across Nigeria. Let's look at uh, Group B now quickly. Uh, those matches are coming up there. Abia Warriors, Enugu Rangers, Dakada, Bayosa. You have Rivers, Lobby Stars, Nagato Nados, Wiki Torres, Sunshine Star versus Doma United for the Men. And for the women, let's quickly run through some of those games coming up in the women's uh, category. Heartland Queens versus Bayosa Queens. Royal Queens be hosting Delta Queens. Battle of the Queens there. Or should Babes in the show board, they'll be against uh, uh, Nigeria Tells uh, in that particular encounter. Uh, Nigeria Tells play their trade in Abuja. Quickly, let's look at Group B. The fixtures Ebom Angels versus another Queens team, Bayosa. Conference Queens versus Delta Queens. You have Edo Queens against uh, Nigeria. Those are the matches coming up. And now let's look at how it's going quickly. Let's move on to uh, European Championship where matches were actually played yesterday. Let's look at some of the results. Shocking one for Scotland, defeating Spain there. Georgia versus Norway. Scotland uh, ended 1-1. You have uh, Scotland against Spain. Good one for Max Samine, scoring two goals there to defeat Spain. What a way to go for Scotland. Turkey, the loss against Croatia, 2-0. Wales, you have 1-0 uh, for Wales, defeating Latvia. Kosovo, Andorra, 1-1. Romania, 2-1. Against, Romania, rather, against Belarus, 1-2-1 uh, there. You have Switzerland, defeating Israel by 3 goals to nil. Well, Scotland, Spain, 2-0. Croatia, Turkey, 2-0 also. Yes, uh, I think the jinx uh, has been broken. Um, this since 1984, Scotland has never uh, beaten uh, Spain, and for McTominay is a good one for him. Now, right now, in space of two games, he has four goals uh, plus the one he, he scored before now, uh, which uh, he now has five goals for the Scottish uh, national team. So, and for Scotland, I think um, they, that's to tell you right now that there are no longer minnows in football. Mm. And if you look at the European qualifiers right now, surprising, surprising results. Results are coming in unexpected. And that's to tell you that their football has developed. Mm. Nigeria needs to wake up. Africa needs to wake up. You just have to wake up. They are giving you those results in the world of football, but then European uh, Championship or the qualifiers. Now, let's quickly talk about uh, another one that has to do with Women's Champions League. It's coming up. Bayern, Barcelona, not forgetting us now. Barcelona, Femini 9 against uh, uh, Roma, Femini 9. They are Roma. Well, they are trailing with uh, just one goal in the first leg. Arsenal also lost first leg by a long goal against Bayern women. These are <laughs> tough ones. This is the second leg, and at least two teams must come out from these particular uh, uh, matches, uh, meant for uh, out of four teams. Yes, I fear for Bayern women because mm -hmm. uh, coming to play as now. Mm -hmm. But they are at, le at least they, they have, have one goal. They have advantage. that one goal advantage, but uh, I fear for them. But for Barcelona against uh, Roman uh, Feminine, I think uh, it's done and dusted. Barcelona will only just add more goals to the one 
they scored in the first leg and uh, probably qualified. But for Bayern Munich, it's a dicey one. Uh, let's not be surprised. It might go to extra time. Hmm. A tough one there for Arsenal versus Bayern women, although uh, anything can happen in the world of football. Well, you look at Barcelona and Femino, uh, Feminino against uh, Roma Femina. They are also leading by a long goal, and now the second leg also have to come up. We look at those real uh, fi fixtures for you there. Now, before we go, let's take three more stories. That's what we boxing first. Well, Anthony Joshua is right now talking tough that uh, if Tyson Fury couldn't fight Luis and you see, due to agreement or disagreement, he should just uh, make sure he redeem himself by showing forth to make it all British heavyweight fight against him. Seems Joshua is really uh, wired up to fight against Anthony. Fair, I think uh, uh, Joshua Fair. has woken up from his slumber because um, people have uh, thrown some shades at him. Uh, he has become, a, let me say, a laughing uh, stock. stock out there. Now, because losing back to back to Lesenda Usik uh, was not an easy one, and he needs. He needs uh, a, a very big fight to come back to the big stage. Um, he has said no matter what happens against uh, Jermaine uh, Franklin on, on Saturday, he's going to, um, that doesn't uh, stop him from pushing back uh, to where he used to be. Uh, and for Tyson Fury, uh, I think he should accept this bout because this bout has been talked about for so long. It has dragged on for too long. So he should accept this bout and let them do it face to face once and for all. Once and for all, they are talking about Anthony Jutta versus Tyson Fury. All British heavyweight fight will, will it really happen? Will it ever happen? We are waiting for that. Don't say why that is there. Let's see what will be happening concerning the boxers uh, uh, fighting themselves. Alexander Yusi also is trying to see who will face him. Well, for Joshua, will be fighting on Saturday against uh, Franklin. And that fight will be the one that a lot of people want to see. Is he back or is he still away? Now, before we go too much in the world of football transfer, Liverpool are ready to pay more than £60 million. Pounds for Napoli centre back Kim Min Jae. They've been after him for a while, but right now they are ready to splat the cash, even more than 16 million pounds uh, that was been placed upon him as valuation. Arsenal are keen on Intram Frank for Mifida, just by Lindstrom. They've been following him, even though Liverpool are also interested. But it seems Arsenal, Mikel Ateta, uh, is really focused on getting Mifida, just by uh, Lindstrom for 30 million euros. And if they can get him, they'll be very glad. At least uh, looking at the fact that the player looks like a, a player that will be fit for, for Arsenal. Yes, uh, I think they are looking for a way how to um, build a cover for uh, Patty, Thomas Patty, because Patty is an injury uh, prone uh, player. And if they can get this young man, I think uh, it's, going to, uh, it's going to be good for Arsenal. And quickly for Napoli, I think they should not be carried away with their exploits right now by selling their players. Mm. Now, for that young man, I think he should remain in Napoli. He should remain in Napoli. The same thing for Simon? Yes, Osimhen should remain there. He shouldn't move. He shouldn't move. But he will be Just say, take your time. Take your time before. He mustn't play in English Premier League. Mm. That's the key there. That's it on 360 Sport. My name is has been the one talking in the studio. We want to appreciate you for coming. It's been my pleasure. I'm Adini Ajisha. Sport is always business and fitness. Thanks for watching. Well,